Good evening and welcome to It Is at the Dark Crusade Season 2. And welcome to the scene set in the Merchant's District. More aptly, the... Well, within La Sombra domain, let's say. Recently, a member of the clan has been resuscitated? Or was she just very low on blood? Well, whatever the case, she's hopefully feeling better as she is about to get a visitor. Uh, Madeline is walking with her very... Uh, spacious cloak hiding the fact that she is actually wearing armor at this point the attacks the uncertainty have made it so that she needs to be well armored at least you feel so and Correct in her preparation, she is. Uh, the rogue canines that have been roaming the city, uh, they've begun to disperse now. No longer the, do they patrol in groups masquerading as city watchmen. Now they seem to take a more distance, remote approach to surveying the city. A more observational role, less direct, less violent, but still very dangerous. As if, uh, because if you are spotted by one, well, who knows? You may be ambushed the very next night, maybe within minutes of being seen. Who knows? But you are fortunate this evening. You do not run into any, and then you do run into, you very quickly beat down. You find they are not particularly strong. Nonetheless, you are able to make your way to the nobles' quarters, to Lady Katerina's residence. You are allowed in to her large yet humble aristocratic home whereupon she, ha whereupon she has dominated the local family to tend to her every need and treat her as if she were one of her own you are greeted by mortals at the entrance uh, uh, two servants one uh, a well dressed housekeeper, uh, the other a noble-looking lady in waiting. Hmm. And they both bow before you very deeply, as if you are, it's strange, it's almost as if they are bowing to something beyond their understanding, as if you are inherently their superior. Hmm. Somewhat, well, Madeline won't show it. There is, well, definitely a conflict to this. On one hand, Madeline looks at these people and doesn't really think that cowering or bowing like this is helpful or becoming. They should be bowing and scraping in pain, but, well, this is not why she's here, so. She thinks that she probably shouldn't see herself as that much better than them. But quickly she just shakes her head a little and smiles and just says, or wishes them a good evening and wishes to see the mistress of the house. The, uh... They both speak in turn. So one makes a uh, one makes a statement and then the other makes a statement. Mm. 
Hmm. Uh, it's the uh, servant, uh, the male servant that begins first. Of course, my lady. The master of the house has been expecting you. Anyway. Right this way, my lady. Mm. She'll smile. And their voices seem to be a little bit dull and their eyes seem slightly cloudy, like they're a little bit distracted. Hmm. Madeline is not overly surprised at this point. And it will take you in. The way they walk is very formalized and very much in lockstep. They're both uh, fairly young and uh, rather attractive looking. Very presentable, very well dressed. They look very fine for servants. Mm. Definitely. But these are... They definitely make fine attendants. They're definitely, um, they definitely. These are definitely um, how to say no. But these aren't simple like serfs or no maids. Or, the these are waiting. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Waiting. These are. Yeah, I was just going to clarify because the lady in waiting. It's like they're people who attend you at court. So these are pages or the upper yeah. crust of. Um, of um, servants, although mm. uh, yeah, just they they used to strike you a little bit. Their what? Their youth. Ah, okay. A lady in waiting can be quite young. The male servants tend to lean a bit on the older side. It usually depends on a lot of things, including who she was born to and their standing. Yes. Madeline will just curiously just look around this place. Is just you know get a feel of what this is. It is it a like are they Arab, Turkey, or Persian, or maybe a uh, French noble house? You'll just. In is actually um, is actually uh, it is in a French styling, although uh, the people here appear to be of um, mixed descent. Okay, but they speak uh, they do speak French to you very fluently, hmm. which um, which leads to believe um, they may be of uh, they may lean towards. Or rather, that they may be descended from uh, uh, from uh, from a French noble line, mm. or at least partially. Actually, do you have politics? I do have a little. Okay, you can roll it. Intelligence. Because there are coats of arms around. There are you. You know you. You know this neighborhood. You are. Um, you may recognize some of the names. That uh, are perception or into oh, it's the same. It's intelligence, just intelligence politics. Um, and uh, dice roller two. Um, one sec. Um, one sec. I'll do it. I'll just say. Uh, Yeah, not exactly the best thing. There you go. There you go. You should make it now. Wow. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um. Yes. You. You recognize. You. You. Re you. 
you you vaguely recognize um, the attendant as uh, uh, as a lady in waiting to um, and and a, uh, and a member of the um, the uh, House of Vendome. Uh, a Frankish noble family that has uh, changed with the times to fit in with the new um, caliphate. Caliphate rule. Hmm. They're one of the stronger noble families. Well, adaptability is something that Madeline really appreciates. She smiles. They take you down several corridors. They rarely, if ever, stop. When they do, it's almost a bit. It's a bit abrupt. Until you eventually make your way over to a small living room. The male servant will enter, will knock on the door. You'll, you will hear the voice of Katharina. Yes. The lady Madeleine is here to see you, my lady. See her in. The lady in waiting will uh, will open the door and um, the two servants will approach the lady Katerina. They will both bow extremely deeply. Um, the lady in waiting uh, curtsying so deeply as to almost take the knee. The uh, the uh, forehead of the Nelson was touching the floor. The Lady Madeleine, my lady. Good evening, Lady Madeleine. But uh, she turns to the servants. You make her. And uh, with a swift, um, with a with a soft dismissive gesture, um, they immediately take their leave. Madeline will wait until they're out, and she will she will curtsy. It is good to see you up and about again. Yes, well, I have you to thank for that, don't I? Quite so. I thank you for rescuing me. It was an ordeal. Oh, well. She, she well. is, she is sat in her tradition, uh, in her standard black gown. She is simply reading um, an well. illuminated manuscript. Hmm. Well, you are my elder. It is my duty, after all, to risk my life, but I do so gladly. We are both ancillary, but your loyalty to the clan is appreciated. Mm. Well, my capabilities allowed me to, well, gain a boon from, to rescue a venture as well. You have risked your blood for both of us, so we owe it to you in return. Mm. It is not such a bad thing as many realize. So many in this city I find to be quite squeamish around the concept of prestation, which is puzzling to me. Mm.
I have found that owing them can, well, myself, my own experience. You can gain much from them. You are illustrious, sire, yourself has shown me. I owed him once, and I, in return, helped the clan immensely. Exactly. There is... Prestation is nothing more than a series of services in trade, in circulation to one another. Mm. And so they feed back upon each other in a way that is mutually beneficial and self-rewarding. Oh, sorry, self-rewarding. Mm. It is why I am so confused as to why this city is almost fearful on the nature of boons. To owe one is to not only give cause for another canite to secure you, to be concerned for your safety, but also to see value in your services. From what I, from what I see in this city, it is perhaps that a couple of our members and some former ones perhaps took it to a level of excess where boons were owed to so many people that they themselves, their favors were somewhat diminished in value. Yes, there can be such a thing as owing too many people or being owed too much. But that is simply a part of the board. Quite so. To know who to owe and what to be owed. Hmm. Quite. May I ask? I will not. I will not pry if it is not your wish for me to. You wish to know how I was captured. And if you remember anything about it. I am sure that the Seneschal already knows, but I would like to know if there is anything. I believe my capture was slightly more complex than the neonates. Then again, I am older and more difficult to locate and disable. But I was actually at a noble war. Hmm. Same as any other, honestly. It was a good evening. And I'd used the opportunity, of course, to take my fair share of blood and benefit the house that I am ever so attached to, and by extension, the clan. What I did not realize was that many of the guards posted for this evening's ball were, in fact, ghouls of the ones that seek to claim the city for their own. Mm. Controlled by two canines. Often masked and braced whelps. Mass embrace. They struck me as I was alone walking down a long stretch Of hallway. I had departed from the ball to simply take a moment to catch my metaphorical breath, consider the evening's machinations and what might be done to bring the house and the clan forward for this evening.
It was then where I was struck. Ambushed, I did not initially consider the guards to be a threat. They are simply, they merely appear to be walking down the hallway. But they struck at me with their weapons before finally revealing their stakes. I killed all of the ghouls and one of the neonates before the other one finally took me down. Mm. I do not recall this ever reaching the city watch or the town crier. I can only imagine those involved covered up the incident. That seems to be a <clears throat> recurring theme in the city these nights. Mm. The ones who do this are very organized and have managed to implant themselves within Odessa very thoroughly and subtly. They are either very patient, very, very patient, or hmm, they are a lot more resourceful than I thought. Well, I would have first thought, but the two that was there at the night, we saved well, most of the people. I have seen one of them before. Did the Seneschal talk to you? I discussed with him that I had recognized one of them. No, he has not given me much information on this particular matter. Rather, I believe he prefers that I take my time to recover before joining in this conflict. I do not wish, as I, I do not believe he wishes to see me in it. For that, I am very thankful. Ah. Well, I will not disclose details that you wish not to partake in. But I would not be adverse to it. Hmm. Oh, yeah. It rather is wholly dependent on whether the Seneschal wishes for me to know or not. And if he does not, then I, then I would not infringe upon his will. Uh, out of character, does he mean? Does she mean that she wouldn't want to offend him by? She, she, she wouldn't. She wouldn't want to know if he explicitly told you not to tell anyone. Which he hasn't actually told you to. You're, as far as you're concerned, you're free to. You're the one who delivered the information to him, so you can tell whoever you want. Yeah, but it, I mean, it could also be understood as then I won't infringe on him to more or less use dominate on me and remove it. But that's not what you're implying. No. Oh, okay. Okay, I was just, I was just wondering because you know, who knows. Um. It was quite a while ago. I s I'm fairly certain that the large person there was of Clan Salubri. Oh, that man, that brute, yes. It was him. I am quite certain I can, un well, I can think of at least one or two reasons why they would be hmm, somewhat agitated towards our good city. But how far such noble warriors are falling if they have resorted to mass murder? That is the thing about warriors of that kind. They can easily justify their own lust for vengeance as a righteous actions against the corrupt, the unholy, the people in need of punishment. Still, we are not the guilty for the failures of the usurpers. If he wishes, if the former Primogen wishes to wage his war, his crusade 
upon them, then he can feel free to do so. But I wish for no part of it, and I should not be a part of it. I should not be a part of that war of their of their crusade or their genocide. A rest assured. That is why I and whoever else will be at my side will end this for them, one way or the other. Personally, I have had much sympathy for the Salubri. For the usurpers are simply that, merely nothing more than blood thieves, and not even particularly competent ones. The Salubri, however, served a higher purpose in the service of others, something the usurpers unfortunately have not inherited from those whom power they uh, from from those whose power they stole. Indeed not. But I can only weep for the end that the warriors have wrought upon themselves, for now they will only be remembered as monsters, because that is how they have decided to end. Quite so. They have sacrificed their legacy in the name of survival. I do not blame them, but I will not remember them for their glory days as a result. My lady, you are older than me. I have not seen much of their glory days, but... Well. I have... I knew some of them before their downfall. Mm. But I was young back then. Very young. They were a little different than you or I or any other clan. Perhaps of us are slightly brighter. There's a certain vigor and optimism to them that I found absent in other clans, save for perhaps Clan Toreador. Clan Toreador focused more on the, the expression of humanity rather than the mortals themselves. It was strange, but I must admit, rather endearing to see a clan so dedicated to the preservation of life when they themselves were not living. Mm. It is sad to see that swept away with nothing more than... yet They're more not... selfish vultures. Mm. Or the lust for vengeance having consumed them. But it is an easy trapping. Mm. But Memnon, our hound, he was visited by someone who was not. Hmm. Apparently, he was visited as well. What became of him? I have not heard of him. Oh, he is. He is well. This is good. A few ghouls poor, but at least one ghoul pure poorer now. But I have spoken with him not long ago. He is well. Might I will be looking out for him. He is a hound of the clan. That should be a thing I should maintain. But apparently, some very brazen, very young neonates, if at all, neonates, if not fledglings, gave him a, hmm, what shall we call it, deal. Drink the blood of their master and see him, and he would live. A ridiculous deal. And he ended them, but however, they sadly ended the life of one of his schools. 
he has my condolences, although I do find it strange I was not offered this choice. Because the name of that master was none of the salubri. Still, but, I but must one. wonder if this was targeted towards younger canines because they are more vulnerable, or if you are correct in that it is the endeavor of a separate individual and they simply have diverging viewpoints on how to approach this city and conquer it. Do you remember a person by the name of Herman? The former Venture Primogen. So he is also among their number. That was, it was the name of the person that wanted to make a deal with dearest Memnon. It could be a ruse, of course. It would not be unthinkable to sow more distrust and simply use the name of someone that would arouse suspicion in a certain direction. But, well, the fact that I have confirmation that two well, at least one I remember, but let's face it, at least two former citizens of this city of certain age certainly returning. And I would not, if that is the case, I would not call it completely unthinkable to think that another would make his returns at the same time. Hmm. Two former primogen that form this crusade against Var City. It gives me reason to believe or to suspect if there are any more. Two former primogen, two elders who used to reside within this city. That is no coincidence. No, it is not. But it also begins to explain the reach of this crusade, shall we say. And it, it does... Begins... Oh, I do apologize. It does explain how they are able to funnel their way into this city so efficiently. They already had influences, infrastructure and contacts here to begin with. But I would have thought that those who spurned them would have dealt with their remains. Madeline sighs quite visibly. It just her head just goes back for a moment. She looks up into the to the floor. Her she just slightly just stretches her neck a bit and has a what shall we say? conservative look on her face, no, uh, quite a bit tired expression on her face as she says, ah, indeed, those were my thoughts exactly last night when I had pieced all of this together, away, when I had gotten the last bit of the puzzle. This seems to be quite a few pieces left on boards that I would have thought people would have swept away when they had the chance. And yet, now we must sweep them away for them. I do not know if you know about my sire, but many people, rightfully, are disgusted with him, or at least hate him. I cannot say I necessarily blame them. But he did teach me much in the time we had together. And this was one of the only things that really stuck. When you make enemies, make certain you have either dealt with them diplomatically or finally. Do not leave them to simply come back and restate their claim. It is disappointing that the shame, that the sloppy work of others has led to this mess, nonetheless. As you say, it appears we must clean it up for them. But this gives us opportunities. Quite so.
May I offer you refreshments? Oh, um, yes, you may. Thank you. She snaps her fingers. And it says, just Mina, bring in the servants. Um, the lady in waiting uh, pops in through the door. Um, literally, Curtsy says, of course, my lady. And then within, within, within half a minute, five individuals present themselves to you. Uh, various um, various maids and manservants who all uh, about about five um, and just Mina himself herself um, uh, all all um, all bow very deeply before you and Katerina and she sim she simply turns her hand with an expectant look. They all um, effectively expose their wrists to you, um, willingly offering you their blood. Hmm. And Madeline just looks over at Mina as she just takes her hand and just slides it very so slightly down her arm. Um, and this one is. I would not wish to intrude. Is uh, she? Does she have uh, duties that might have her to be less? Hmm. Lady Madeline, my blood is yours. Well, if she has duties, I would not wish to well, make her less able to perform these duties. If she will perform her duties to exception, mm. or whether you sustain yourself from her or not. Mm. Madeline smiles, and she will drink from from Mina and oh, just one plot point, and then she will drink from a manservant uh, as well. She will also take one plot point from him. Uh, when you feed from Mina, you see her tense up. You see her kind of taking a sharp breath um, uh, and uh, let out a stifled, uh, a stifled sigh as you um, feed from her arm, uh, succumbing to the kiss and giving herself over to you, um, both mentally and physically. And the manservant much the same uh, when you feed from his wrist uh, he drops to his knees and lets out a soft sigh as you feed from him once again so coming to the kiss and being all that you wish him to be and katarina for her part simply gestures to a maid who Bends her gestures almost to a well, to a very reflexive degree, almost as if she knows Katharina's will before before she even gestures, and she simply walks on over, and Katharina simply feeds from her wrists, and then again from a man servant of her own. Again, their reaction much the same to yours. Hmm. When they're fed upon, they look ever so slightly woozy, but otherwise perfectly fine. Hmm. After Madeline is done, she just... So, hmm. Thank you very much. There is that moment when you, uh, when the, uh, when you release your fangs from them, is that brief moment where their eyes sort of lock of yours for a few seconds and you can see that sort of cloudy look in their eyes? Why? 
Thank you very much. Very considerate. I must say you have great taste. Why, thank you. I do pride myself on diversifying the flavor of my herd. Hmm. Seeing all of this. Sometimes, you know, sometimes when I was, when I first came to Edessa, when I first met Ulrich, part of me wished, and I suppose part of me still wishes, that I would have been his, his sister in blood, but oh well. You honor me, Madeleine, she says as she, um, she simply takes the arm of uh, the f uh, fifth and final maid and kind of also uh, her arm kind of slips around her back and she pulls her upwards um, between you two. She actually offers you the arm. Would you like to share? Oh, of course. And she will. The uh, maid, under the pressure of um, both your fangs and Katarina's, um, very much struggles to... Uh, to maintain her composure and really doesn't. She kind of crumples under the pressure and lets out that ecstatic cry when you uh, when you feed from her. But it soon ends and she is released, the wound cleaned and placed back down. How many blood points do you take from her? Because you are sharing with someone. Yeah, just one. She okay. just, she's, she's taken three overall. Gluttony not being a, a thing on the road of Lilith. Hmm. Quite the opposite, actually. Katarina rather almost, almost like, almost like this person were made of glass. Very gently places them back down. Um, You can feel, you can, you can sense some of the uh, longing in some of the servants um, uh, for, for, for more feeding, uh, for, for contact with the, with the vampiric kiss. Um, you're old enough to uh, understand that um, these people are, are blood dolls, people who willingly seek out the kiss for its sensation. And Addicted. Effectively, yeah, they effectively willingly, effectively, yeah, they they willingly offer blood for for effectively the high the kiss provides. Um, mm. A very dangerous line to walk sometimes, but there is no greater feeling. So, to many, worth the cost. Hmm. Katarina goes to a, a side table that's sort of between the two chairs you sit upon. She takes a simple napkin. It's like a small pile of napkins. Um, she simply uh, cleans her lips. She offers one to you. And, oh, Madeline uh, will take it. And she will say, just you know, make sure these are replaced by the end of the evening. And she will say, of course, my lady. You may all leave now. And they all leave.
Mm. Mm. She sort of closes her eyes and smiles. She's obviously she's obviously um, embracing the 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 warm feeling, the warm echoes of just having recently fed and experienced a kiss. Mm. Well, I, I'm glad you enjoyed. Where were we? Mm. Sadly, I believe it was the incompetence of others. Ah, yes, cleaning up table scraps. Yes, it is a shame, but it does present our clan an opportunity. Uh, and, well not just an opportunity to reinforce our own value, of course. This is well established at this point within the domain. Uh, frankly, despite Ventru's tenure as prince and sheriff, they barely rival us in power and prowess here. It's fairly obvious for all to see that Sasha is the true leader. Do you think that he should be I that, the last, that, that the last step should be taken and that should, he should be named so, not only in truth, and but in actuality be named it. I wonder. She she uh, she leans in. She actually um, as she she leans in. Uh, she places her hands on your shoulders and simply uh, uh, whispers in your ear very softly. There is no one more fit to be prince than my sire. She turns around and she, she nods and looks at her. It's quite clear that Madeline agrees. She doesn't say anything, but it's quite clear that Madeline, she might as well be just be tapping her nose or something. Like she's quite clearly agreeing, but hmm. How should this be done, though? Is it is simply a matter of waiting? It may not take long for the prince to... No, I do not believe this is the time for patience. This is the time for action. This incident exposes a weakness in Ventru rule and their coalition they will need to act quickly if they are to maintain the facade of strength and power over this domain but if we act before they do if we resolve these threats before they do then our clan will be the ascendant force here our clan will appear strong while the Venture and their allies appear weak and incompetent. Well, they have certainly helped us in that department. She smiles. True, but linking these would-be tyrants and killers to them will be difficult to prove. It may be something better applied in the aftermath rather than during the midst of the chaos, it will look like blame gaming and oh, well. petty point scoring rather than dutiful service or an attempt to expose genuine corruption. Quite so. I was more thinking of the current state of the coalition. 
They have not done themselves any favors. Margo. They rarely speak with me, and I must say that is very disappointing. But it does not work to their benefit. It is only their, well, it is only another failure of theirs. After all, I could have been such a useful ally that they have now simply ignored. But such is life, and now we must look to greater things. May I ask, how has progress been within your domain? Have you been hindered in any way? Is there anything I may do to help? I am at your service. Hmm. Well, at the moment, with well, night activities returning, well, not normal, but kind of. Hopefully soon it will be as normal. I must say that I have gotten some semblance of mm, order back to my domain. So at the moment, I do not believe there will be anything, but not too far from now, I do believe that... Mm, With all of this destabilization, perhaps it is time for commerce in general mm. to be completely administrated by the one clan that seems to be able to, well, hold things in order. Speaking of which, the followers of Set have been making positive overtures towards our clan. The my harpy, Irene, I've been informed, has been released back to the Seneschal, uh, unbound. They attempted to wake her with their blood, but were unable to do so. I am concerned. But it does put me at ease that they did not decide to fully bind her. It is promising. Well, I did publicly state well, I do not know if you know, but I did publicly state that I wished her returned, given that I returned everyone to their respectful place, you to your sire, and eventually <laughs> to his sire. I do not believe I've been made aware of this announcement. Well, I have only just awoken, so... I understand. I did very swiftly make it quite publicly known that I saw Saladrin run off with her and wished her returned, as anyone else would do. But they were, well, I suppose it depends on your perspective. But I suppose you could say that they were trying to better her condition and nurse her back to health. <laughs> mm, right. Yeah. While the Setites are not a trustworthy clan, they are savvy. They know better than to make more enemies than they can handle. They know they will need allies. Quite they so. have much to offer, but on their own, they are targets for extermination due to their reputation but to a clan such as ours one based more on the based more on the concept of merit and competency as opposed to lineage and age they can make very, very useful and underrated allies. Indeed they can. I may but even... It may be wise to... include them in. See if you can work with them. There may be other clans as well, 
Panoramas is a neutral force, but it has seen one that is fairly, fairly amenable to our will. I have worked with Salajin. He is hmm, perhaps the most self-absorbed person I have met in at least a hundred years. But he is very dangerous, quite powerful. And I am not opposed to working with him. But I do, um, should, I do believe we should have Hmm. What no, shall we call them? Contingency plans? Yes. Yes, he is a very capable individual, but he is somewhat of a loose cannon, from what I hear, and a known, mass, uh, a known domain breacher. Hmm. Problematic, but yes. it does limit his potential for advancement. And this means he has to lean on others for political survival. Which is perhaps why the clan of Sets has become so cozy with us. To understand that for all their short-term gains, they need a clan that can help stabilize those gains for the long term. No. And as far as I understand, their hmm, religious persuasions also severely limits the hmm, influence they can have on, especially to Judeo, the uh, Abrahamic faiths. Hmm. Yes, I know little of Sethi doctrine. I don't care much for it, but... So long as they do not become too overwhelming an influence on the city, I have no problem with them being here. In fact, I would almost encourage it. They make a great counterbalance to the other more ironically self-absorbed clans within the domain. Mm. They are very capable, alongside the Ravnots, at humbling them. But I digress. This leaves two matters. One, in whatever way I may assist you in, now that you have re-established order within your domain, how I may aid you in expanding it, and taking the fight to your would-be persecutors. And how to retaliate against those who attempted to and and much to my shame succeeded in apprehending myself hmm quite Perhaps we can use this to locate trap and isolate some of these rogue canines that have been wandering around i don't imagine they can embrace too many more the mortals are already quickly becoming wise to such blunt tactics. Mass embrace, I have heard of it. I have heard of this. I must say, this is the first time I have truly come face to face with it. It, it is, is atrocity. It is a vile breach of many traditions of progeny, accounting, domain, the silence. Needless to say, the cost it may have upon the soul of those who perform it. Of course, some may feel more comfortable than others, but it is extremely dangerous to us all that this has occurred. The only other possibility, of course, is that they are bringing in more canines from outside the domain, but this would be more noticeable, I think. Mm. Our world has many contacts along the roads. I believe he would have been aware 
if they were bringing in outsiders and, of course, the Seneschal. Question is, does this have anything to do with the, up until now, quite little threat of the war that was declared by a neighboring Princeton? Or is this connected? It is true, Fiona could be connected. They could have combined forces. This would also explain how so many canines put up in such a short period of time and why they're centered around the farmlands. But I've heard little of Fiona recently. Perhaps they have taken to the same subtle, to the same subtle and silent and politicking and scheming as that of those former primogen. The possibility can't be discounted. I cannot say I, I cannot say the way, but it is something we will find out. If I may invite you to the next ball I host, perhaps we can locate some of these ghouls and canines for ourselves and trap some of them, apprehend and interrogate some of them. Well, it would be my pleasure, but I am afraid you must do me one small favor in this regard. Of course. Find me one of, well, I would not dare to say that I would wish your gown, but to such a thing I am, my style is quite a lot more simple, as you probably know. I do not have anything as fine as yours. I shall find you the most beautiful dress this city can muster, Lady Madeleine. Right. I thank you. That is all that may be worthy of your splendor. Hmm. Well, I will look forward to this. But rest assured, we will find the deep, well, whoever is aligned with these cowards. And we will make sure that they are punished. Cowards, I believe them not to be. Mm. Yeah. Dangerous. Lawbreakers. Failures, yes, but cowardly. I'm not certain. Not from what I have heard. They seem quite content to confront us directly when it suits them. Mm, you are right. Coward is the wrong word. Arrogant may be the wiser one. But at this, say, at this stage, I am merely trading insults in an enemy we both despise. And While it may make a fine hobby, I do not believe it will prove productive for either of us in any meaningful way. No. But I am glad to see you are recovering. I will... Well, I actually have quite a few matters to attend to, but it has been a genuine pleasure. Please, I will see you again soon, perhaps at the ball. Um, but I will wish you a very good evening. And whatever else I may be of service for, of course. She nods and uh, will bid her farewell. She will curtsy again. Yeah, she will. Uh, Lady Catherine stands up and she will curtsy in deference to you. She will curtsy more deeply than you. Mm. As she owes you her blood. Mm. So she is, she is, uh, she must be deferent. But uh, Madeline will uh, then take her leave and perhaps be escorted out by servants? Maybe. Yes, she will call the servants to escort you out. But as Nina, she is, hmm, Romy perception empathy. Perception empathy. Uh, what is her empathy? I cannot remember. Uh, 
There we go. I have... Wow. I have five successes, and if, if, if it is truths, Not then true. I have seven. Nah, just a five, I'm afraid. Uh, okay. Um, me. she... Five is good. Okay. She is quite tired, a bit prematurely so, because of the feeding. She, her eyes remain cloudy. She is a very... You notice she is a somewhat dormant person, very passive. You notice all the servants here are passive, but here are uh, her almost... Um, she is less passive, more reactive. She is entirely passive until she deems it necessary to act. You can kind of see it in her eyes and how she perceives you and Katerina. Rather, she, she appears to be almost uh, sort of duty-bound to your wills. Um, but um, a bit more, having a bit more of a of a, of a will than um, than the other uh, than the other blood dolls here, um, because you have kissed her, um, she does seem to possess uh, some of that hunger for you as well as Katerina as well. Madeline will talk to her, and she will just say, "So." How long have you been in her service? I have been in my lady's service for many years. You serve her well. You should be proud. I am very proud to serve uh, my, lead, uh, my lady wholly and to every extent that I am able. She doesn't say anything unless you, you say something. No, she just stands there for a moment. She's not a ghoul, right? Do you want perception her? Oh uh, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, you'll need to if you want to figure out someone's a ghoul, you'll need to orbit. Yeah, something. yeah, I know. I was just yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, um you can tell she is in fact a ghoul. Hmm. Hmm. She just takes that under advisement. Uh, uh, her aura is fairly um Fairly, very still. Um, actually, that's not true. One sec, let me. The aura is. It's. There. Oh, you dropped. Oh well. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I believe Chris dropped. Since Madeline was. On her way out. As Chris is probably asleep at this point, um, we'll give him a moment. 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 Or if not, we will see that 
Madeline staring at a ghoul is where we will end our scene. It actually worked. Woo! Right, yeah, yeah. Madeline is still staring at a ghoul. Yes. Um, one sec. I'm just going to try and get a bit more data because I think this might drop in a moment. So I need to just. Okay, I'm actually fine. Um, yes, the colors are sharp. One second, actually, let me close this.
Um, mm. Oh, sorry. She is... Sorry. Her colors are sharp and flickering. Um, it has pale blotches in it, representing her as a ghoul, but it is a wash with light blue. It is entirely light blue. There is just calm, calm, and more calm. There is almost this unrelenting passivity to her until you kind of look a bit deeper into her aura and you can see there is a sort of pulsing, stronger shade of deep red and blue representing desire, lust, and love. Hmm. Uh, being a practicer of Dominate, would I say that this person is uh, has been conditioned? Rolling perception awareness. Yes, this would could be. Yes. She gives all the signs of being conditioned. Yes. Okay. The the calm aura. Yeah, like that. Um, it would the, almost uh, be obvious. The, the sort of the passive and reactive uh, nature of the person. The otherwise lack of expression, the uh, the very um, formalized way in which they go about approaching you, it's very, mm. it's, it's very, it's very reminiscent of conditioning. Yeah, she it's, she has been fully conditioned. Yeah, it is not something that Madeline is capable of herself, but she has so, seen it once or twice, and she's seeing it again. And as she probably, as she stands there, I mean, not that the ghoul will know, but Madeline will just, there will be, she will shudder a little. Just look at her and we'll bid the ghoul well, farewell. And, um, her, her aura looks, it, it looks mottled for a few moments, representing confusion. But her expression doesn't change. Hmm. Um, yeah, but, uh, Madeline, uh, Madeline will leave, and, uh... Both yeah. servants bow, um, uh, Jasmina's, uh, curtsy taking her to one knee, and the, uh, the, um, male servant simply bowing so much that he actually takes the one in his head once again, almost touches the floor. Mm. And they simply remain in that state until you are gone from their view. And Madeline will proceed to head home. And with that, I do believe this scene will come to a close. Thank you, everybody, and thank you all for watching. Good night!